Hey everybody, it's Maxine Taylor with my Trumpology report for July 2018. And I want to thank all of you who have been so supportive of this Trumpology report. I work very diligently to be very objective, to be an objective astrological reporter. Uh, <clears throat> and I've met so many of you who are, who are so knowledgeable about astrology, and I appreciate your watching. So, let's talk about the summer of 2018. We are well into it. First of all, as many of you know, Mars has gone retrograde. And when Mars goes retrograde, Mars rules passion, Mars rules gunfire, it rules war. And and in, in uh, the chart of somebody who is the president of a country, I'm going to interpret it not just on a personal level, but on a, a much more mundane level because of the responsibility involved. Okay. So Mars is retrograde. Um, and it will be retrograde until August 28th, which means things are not moving forward. It's not like a, a Mercury retrograde where everything's confused. It's just that things are not moving forward. Oh, did I mention Mercury retrograde? Well, guess what? Mercury goes retrograde in addition to Mars being retrograde where everything's like no traction, kind of flat line. Then Mercury comes in and confuses everything. Mercury goes retrograde on the 26th and 23 of Leo. Yeah, it's going to stay retrograde, of course, until August 19th, which is before Mars goes direct. So in July, we've got Mars retrograde, Mercury retrograde. When Mercury goes retrograde, it rules our mouth and our minds. It rules the press. It rules communication. If things were not already confused about communication, guess what? <laughs> duck here it comes and in addition many of you already know this we have two eclipses we'll have one more in august this is why i'm going to put in a little another announcement here this is why i am offering my three clips special if i have not done your forecast for the next year or the next 18 months actually you're going to want to take advantage of my three clips special. It's on my website, MaxineTaylor.com. With the world being what it is, this, my three clips special, which is a, an entire forecast for the next 18 months, will help you personally navigate your own world. You know, sometimes we forget that what's going on out there is not going on in our own home and you want you need your own personal roadmap i highly recommend it it's on video it's affordable you can't beat it with a stick okay so back to what's going on we have two eclipses the first one is july 12th it's in 20 cancer 41 find this in your chart this is the solar eclipse, and this is where things start growing, okay? If you have not watched my July forecast on, not the Trumpology, but on the regular, my regular YouTube channel, you might want to take a look at it. Um, I do the forecast, the solar forecast for, for everybody. This particular eclipse, allow about a five degree orb. That's what I allow, plus or minus. So it's, it's 15 to 25 of cancer, find that in your chart. That's where things start growing, start moving. Now, I just said Mars is retrograde, nothing's really moving forward. So it's kind of a mixed bag. The biggie is the full moon, the lunar eclipse on July 27th. Because at that point in time, Mars is in the same degree as the eclipse, retrograde. Mars. The full moon is in 4 Aquarius 45 on July 27th. That's where Mars is. And 
just to throw in another little wrinkle, that's where the transiting south node is. So it's a very important time. It's only after Mars goes direct that we'll feel the full power of Mars. And how it is directed will be up to the people in charge, but more importantly, up to us. How do you visualize it? How do you create your world? How do you choose to see it? We can make a difference. And of course, midterms are coming up and a lot of people are looking forward to that. So let me get in and get out. You know, sometimes less is better, um, particularly with world events. So let's start with the sun. This is Trump's chart. Let me get it. And I'm going to need to be able to see this. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> All right. Here we go. With the transiting sun in Trump's 11th house and the lunar eclipse on the 12th sitting there, uh, his Saturn is triggered. Now, the 11th house deals with friends and group activities, and we know that there is a, a Supreme Court seat available, among other things. We don't know who's going to be leaving his cabinet. We don't know. We don't know any uh, who's going to leave, who he's going to fire, who he's going to bring in. But this is the house of friends. And so he is turning to his friends big time. Um, Saturn rules his the interception in his fifth house of children. And this deals with other people's children. Who are other people's children? Everybody else on this planet. And we have had a situation with children being separated from their parents. I can't even talk about it. Okay? You know what I'm saying. And so this is triggered quite nicely, I, I would think, with the sun sitting on it and the lunar eclipse, other people's children. It rules that interception, his own children. It rules Aquarius on his sixth cusp, his work, so his friends and his work, they are one. And his seventh house of partnership. Now his seventh house is 29 degrees, 58 minutes of Aquarius. So it's, it's the final, he's learning the final lesson of relationships. That's what's triggered with his Saturn. And with his Saturn-Venus conjunction in the 11th house, he, uh, he wants loyalty from friends, and he takes his friendships very seriously. Now, the sun sits on Venus, which is lovely, which means that there can be uh, blessings for him as regards his friends and the group activities that he's involved in. Venus rules his midheaven of his public image. So his friends will help his public image and his career. And it rules his third house of communication. This can help him with groups of people. I'm thinking the press. You know, he, he, he could make headway there. And there could be a positive result from that. So the eclipse really brings it to a head, even though it's not a full moon eclipse. Um, it's a solar eclipse. But it starts the energy moving, which is really what we want to see. Okay. The sun uh, triggers Saturn on the 16th and Venus on the 18th. Mercury, what we think about and talk about. Mercury's in his 12th house of behind the scenes negotiations, hidden enemies, and it sits on his Pluto on the 6th. Pluto is the planet of control. When Pluto is hit, uh, there can be either transformation or control. Pluto is all or nothing. And so I can see by this that there's a lot of negotiation, a lot of talking behind the scenes about all or nothing. In other words, shape up or ship out can be the, the tone of conversations. I'm understating it when I say conversations because it can be quite explosive with a Pluto in the 12th house, especially since Pluto rules the fourth of families, homes, families, 
uh, real estate. It can be his own real estate, his own holdings, his own family. Yeah, he could get angry at him. There could be a big change in the structure of the home and family here. And we, we won't know exactly what it is, maybe until later on, because it's hidden in the 12th. All right. You hear what I'm saying. Okay. Venus. Venus is the lesser benefic. It is love. It is money. It is beauty. It's in his 12th house. And so he is enjoying his solitude and privacy. And there is uh, enjoyment that we will not know about. It sits on his Mars on the 6th. And didn't we just talk about the fact that Mercury sits on his Pluto Oops, on the 6th? So lots of 12th house activity. Venus on Mars is passion. Uh, with Venus, it is a loving, it has a loving tone. But anger is anger is anger, and it is triggered on the 6th. It crosses his ascendant on the 9th. When it moves into his first house, he's going to be happy. Venus in your first house, you are a happy camper. You're feeling pretty. You're feeling good about yourself. I mean, think back to the last time Venus was uh, on your ascendant. There's a joy that you have, a happiness. And this is the part that I want to share, not just in his chart, but of course in the United States chart, because it's so powerful. Mars is sitting in that sixth house of work, health, service, employees. The full moon, the lunar eclipse, when things come to a head and explode, the full moon is on July 27th. It sits on Mars, not his natal Mars, transiting Mars. So there is an explosive note to this eclipse as regards his health, his job, his employees. And oh yes, the transiting south node is there. I, I don't use the transiting south node that much in, in a personal chart, but in the chart of somebody running a country, I do. This can be an area of loss on some level, of letting go, whether it's somebody who works for him, whether it's um, his own health. Uh, hard to say how it will manifest, but this will be his employees. And the way I see things, uh, of course, everybody he hires, everyone he appoints is his employee. It's their government employees, but he sees them as his employees. So this is a very big area. Remember that eclipses are at their peak three to four months after they occur, which is great, except that if you count down three to four months from the July and August eclipses and you have your ephemeris in front of you, you will notice that first Venus goes retrograde and then overlapping it, Mars goes retrograde and then direct. So between now and the end of the year, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of unsettledness, not just for the United States or the president, but for everybody all over the world. And you want to see where this lands in your chart so that you'll know when to zig and when to zag. I know I'm looking at my chart very closely. Okay, so that's Trump. Excuse me, so sorry. I hope that didn't make you dizzy. Let's look at the United States. Let me get the chart here for those of you who may be new to the Trumpology report. Um, I use the seven Gemini uh, rising chart for the United States. And uh, if you want to know why, I, I use it because it works for me. Whatever United States chart works for you is super. You know, astrology is a magical science and there's something for everyone. All right, let me get the mundane houses here. Now, once again, I've gone over the eclipses. We know when they are. 
so many of you are students of astrology, um, what I'm saying here, very often, you already know. You know when the eclipses are. You know when the retrogrades are. You're just not sure on how to interpret them. <clears throat> because if, if, you're, if they're unsettling, <clears throat> excuse me, if they're unsettling, it can be unsettling. Okay, let's look at the sun. First of all, it's in the United States second house. And this is what's so cool about this. This is the country's income. Uh, which I think is fabulous with the sun there. It's the um, it's commerce and trade. The second house is commerce and trade. It's money. It's finances. It's the stock exchange. It's banks. Um, and so with the sun sitting on Jupiter, which it is on the fourth of July, um, this is a time of happiness for us. Um, Jupiter rules our seventh house of our uh, allies and open enemies. Isn't it interesting that the seventh house is uh, both allies and obvious enemies? Very funny. And Jupiter also rules the 11th house of the United States. So uh, mundanely, the seventh house in the United States, which is ruled by Jupiter, is international affairs, war, lawsuits. It's the public. It's lawyers, it's politics, and it's the lower court. It's marriage. And, uh, of course, we're talking now about uh, what's going to happen to Roe v. Wade, what's going to happen to gay marriage. Uh, this is what we're looking at here. The 11th house, of course, in a person's chart is other people's children. In, the, in a mundane chart, it's Congress, congressmen, legislation, the treasury, uh, friends, and it does deal with other people's children. Yep. I can only hope that we see progress relating to children returning to their families. That's on the fourth. Then the solar eclipse is on the third cusp. Let me see if I have it. Yes, uh, it's on the third cusp on July 12th, of course. And the third house deals with news, reporters, uh, all communication. Now, of course, Mercury is going to go retrograde, so that's going to be interesting. Deals with public opinion and traffic and travel. And the sun lights things up, which is bright. It, it, it brings it to a head and uh, creates life there. Uh, books and newspapers, neighborhoods. Uh, schools, we, we can't, I, I can't even go there. You know what I'm talking about. And public transportation. As the sun sits here on the U.S. chart, this lights up those areas. Yes, it sits on Mercury, which is communication, on the 16th. And Mercury rules our ascendant in the United States chart. Lots of talking, lots of travel, lots of communication. To me, these are our wonderful um, news reporters who do such a terrific job uh, researching and sharing information that we would not have any other way. Uh, we wouldn't be able to get it. On the 30th, the sun sits on our north node there, and in a mundane chart, the north node is the good guy. And so this will help everything that I just described for the third house of the United States chart. Hallelujah. Okay, then let's talk about Mercury. Communication, correspondence, transportation. Now, Mercury is going to go retrograde on the 26th of the month. It'll go direct August uh, 19th. So, here's Mercury in the third house once again on July 4th. With a north node there, there should be good news. 
I would imagine that some of the uh, news reporters are going to be re reporting <coughs> heartwarming humanitarian stories and transportation should pick up traffic, travel, uh, communication of all sorts. On the 10th, it crosses into the fourth house and on the 26th, it goes retrograde. And the fourth house, keep in mind, in a mundane chart, deals with, of course, families. We're talking about families that have been separated. Real estate. deals. The fourth house deals with the party out of power. That would be the Democrats in this case. Domestic affairs are weather. With a retrograde going on, we've had crazy weather um, prior to the retrograde, of course. And... The, the weather is reflecting the situation here on planet Earth, I think. That's the way I look at it. Uh, it deals with farmers, builders, crops, mines, and seniors. <clears throat> so, when it goes retrograde, there can be confusion or change in those areas. Okay, that's the first deal. Let's take a look at Venus, the lesser benefic. It is sitting in the fourth house of homes and families and, uh, and the weather. And I am truly hopeful that Venus will en help enhance the situation with those families who are now living in our country, those families from other countries who are in our country, and help them in reuniting with their own children. Uh, <clears throat> and again, Venus will help the Democrats. It will help domestic affairs. It will help uh, the land, hopefully the weather. And on the 23rd, it crosses into the fifth house. Now, the fifth house deals with children, our children, all children. Uh, with fun, with sports, with gambling, uh, theaters, uh, congressional and public hearings, uh, stadiums, everything relating to fun. And when Venus sits on Neptune on the 30th, uh, Neptune can be escape. Uh, fun is an escape. Um, other things ruled by Neptune, alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, movies. Uh, we, need, <clears throat> we need a break. In addition, however, what was I looking at before? Of course, Neptune is in the house of children. It rules the 11th house of other people's children. And this is a beautiful placement for bringing, considering those children, to be our children and helping in that area. Um, I think there'll be a lot more creativity and maybe some fabulous movies. The biggie, Mars, but not Mars alone. The lunar eclipse, the full moon, and the transiting south node. They form a trinity here that, as I've mentioned before, uh, has me concerned. The South Node in a mundane chart is the area of loss. It's not a positive area. And, you know, I tend to look at things very positively because I have learned how to create my world the way I want it to be. And I'm very blessed. I'm very happy. Uh, with my life, with my friends, and uh, over time, I've become friends with so many of you. So, I don't look at the South Node as negative per se. In a per in a personal chart, it deals with that which we have mastered in past lives and to which we are instinctively drawn, and we can get drained if we spend too much time with that south node. In a mundane chart, it is much more um, Saturnian. Okay? The ninth house in a mundane chart 
deals with the upper courts. So we're talking about uh, the Supreme Court. Foreign travel, higher education, religion, science, uh, philosophy, world trade. These are people from other countries. With Mars retrograde on our south node, uh, right around the 27th, and the south node, transiting south node, on our south node, I'm looking to hear what's going on with some of the foreign countries with whom we have be recently become friends. This is not a pretty picture for making friends with people from other countries. Um, it needs to be uh, handled diplomatically. Now remember that that eclipse on uh, July 27th in four Aquarius is going to be strongest three to four months later. So just count with me, August, September, October and November. That's when it will be strongest, October and November. I will keep you posted. Um, <clears throat> during <clears throat> October and November, Venus goes retrograde and direct, and Mercury goes retrograde and direct. And so we know that correspondence and communication and transportation are all unsettled when Mercury goes retrograde <clears throat> and Venus goes retrograde. This area also deals with foreign travel. It deal, and since it deals with foreign trade, there can be tariffs, there can be embargoes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> this is a little upsetting to me. So it is world trade. So light workers, let's see uh, kindness and love and common sense filling our leaders, the leaders of our countries, and bringing about the love and the peace that most of us want. Um, I think that's all I got to say this week, this month. I would love to be able to do your chart for you to help you navigate. Uh, just go to my website, you can see why I am suggesting to you that you make sure that you know what your roadmap is so that no matter what is going on in our world, you are in charge of your life. You are the creator and you can create it your way if you know what the facts are. So dear friends, May the stars shine brightly on our world. Peace out.